start with getting the charcoal capsules. Right here, you can get them from like, most health stores because yeah, they're normally good for anti-flatulence. So you know, a, a nice side effect of this is that yeah, you're going to be pleasant company for the rest of the day. Now, what you do, you want to break these up in in half and get and pour out the charcoal, which is uh, which is very finely ground, into here. Now, true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. What you do is you put the charcoal powder in there and mix it up with some sunflower oil or olive oil. We go for sunflower oil because it's sort of taste neutral and it's, it's alright, it's also cheaper. And you want to be careful of the quantities because it can get too runny. But what you want is a nice, uh, hopefully you can see that, it, it drips a bit but it doesn't drip too much. That's, that's the kind of thing you want. Now we've got a large brush here but you can also use cotton buds or q-tips for painting people's tongues or palettes, you know, whichever they prefer because with the brushes it can often be a quite an unpleasant sensation because they're very big. Now what, what you also want all the way through is a lot of kitchen roll because when, when people have either the, the paintbrush in their mouths or the mirror in their mouths people dribble a lot and it gets quite quite messy. There's also the fact that you want to protect your own clothes. Now here we've got, um, we've got something to mark out that this is Bonnie's paint because when, when you're doing a, a large experiment with a lot of people you know, you've got a lot of different brushes, a lot of different paint, a lot of different people with a lot of different germs. So you want to keep everything separate as possible, especially when you're in, in the field, which has got slightly less control over it. I mean, you don't necessarily know who's got, like, who's got TB, who's, who's got HIV. It's, it's a delicate issue, so you want to keep everything as separated as possible. Here we've also got the sign that says what the, what the word is or what the sound is that we're making. This is very important to have this during the either the video or the picture because after several experiments you forget who said what and when and to to then try and match up all the all the data with something when 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 it's not properly labeled that's a nightmare and it just defeats the point of the experiment so make sure you've got this within the picture every time finally after you're done with the palatography We've got, uh, we've got some oranges here, oranges, pineapple, something that's fruity, uh, something that's fruit and quite acidic. It's brilliant for removing charcoal, so um, it works so much better than mouthwash or just cleaning your teeth. You want to get some fruit with the acid and swill it around your mouth and you're good as new. You, might, you may find that um, some speakers, especially elderly speakers, they don't produce enough saliva and the, the, with a the dry mouth the, the paint just sticks and it doesn't go very well. So we've got, what we've got here is some dry mouth mouthwash and when you wash that around your mouth you, know, you produce a bit more saliva and the palatography goes so much nicer. And for when you, when you, when you use the mirror, well, the problem with these mirrors is that they're quite expensive and so unlike brushes and paint in which you can have one for each speaker, you'll often only have one or two of these mirrors. So therefore the, the hygiene and the cleanliness of it is essential and that's why between each palatography take we wash it down with medical alcohol. That, um, that, that works a lot better than water, firstly because it's, well you know it's going to sterilize it, uh, secondly because the medical alcohol runs right off and it doesn't leave any smears, which water often does. And for, for protecting people's clothes we've got a tea towel, you can also use a, an apron or a bib or some kind, and then very importantly is the trash bag. Because this fills up very, very quickly, and we can see all the like, all the remnants of people's palatography experiments. So you want to keep the trash bag close at hand, because carrying these around with you is not pleasant. We often found that when when we were doing a video experiment, uh, we'd get the rustling sound, get the rustling sound all the way through, and so you want to you want to put it in a position where it's not going to interfere with the recording, especially if um, the sound, you need a particularly high audio quality for the sound. And we also have the field notebook, which is where you write down all the information that's relevant to the experiment, such as the name of the speaker, the word that they're saying, whether the, this was the word uh, taken at the first, second, third attempt, maybe their age, maybe their dialect, maybe any, any, uh, any difficulties or interesting things that happened during the during the experiment. But this is the bag that everything goes in. So all this stuff, it doesn't take up that much space, but just get a nice padded bag or something, just shove it all in, and, and you're good to go.